depending on when you took HTML from me, you either studied previous versions of, uh, of HTML or HTML5. Just to review, one of the things added to HTML5 was a set of tags to define the structure of the page. In the past, in HTML4, we would have used divs. We would have used a div for the header, the div for the nav, a div for the content, and a div for the footer. Now there's actually specified <coughs> tags for those. So there's a header tag that replaces, in, in the old days, I would have done div id equals header. Um, there's a nav instead of div id equals nav. And really the benefit of that is you can really fine tune your styling and you can really um, use those in your style rules instead of having to have a bunch of uh, uh, rules based on ID. So there's advantages to do that. So let's go in and put the copyright symbol 2013. All right. We can look at this in design view if we want. And there we see it. I'm not going to spend tons of time focusing on the appearance, but I am going to style it just to kind of show you how the components that we already know, that is the CSS, works in this mode. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create a little style sheet file here. And new file. Style sheet. Call it main. And I'll go in and I'll put some style rules in here. I will make the background color of this a shade of gray. So, oh, looky there. I'll let you pick the color. <laughs> Family, Helvetica, which is not on this Windows machine, but it's evil clone Ariel is, and Sans Serif, and so on. I'm then going to do some things where I can do header with. 100% slope left. Nav with 20% apply that style to this guy. Just like I did, just like I applied style sheets before. I am going to try to pay real close attention to dotting the I's and crossing the T's for this. Um, just again, to, to show you the things you do. For example, I went and set a title for this page. All right. And I'm going to put a style in here. Pardon me? Yes, thank you.
old style sheet. Main dot CS. Main dot CS. Yes. Okay. All righty. Let's save everything. We can view this in design view. And yeah, that's good enough for, for what we're doing here. All right. Now, let's go and preview this in the browser. Trick question. I know this ain't going to work. So this isn't a case of it being Friday for me and I'm getting this wrong. Nothing happened. It's forbidden. It's forbidden. Ooh, that seems <laughs> ominous. Hey. Uh, exactly. What's wrong? Why didn't it show my page? You haven't actually made a page yet, have you? I haven't actually made a page yet. Alright? I've made a master page. I have not made a page. And I did this to illustrate a point. Web servers do not serve up master pages. Notice that this has a different extension. It's a dot master. And you can't, the, 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 the user can't access this. Alright? The reason we got that error is because we had no default.aspx, so it didn't know what to bring up, because by default, that's what it looks for, default.aspx. And, um, if it can't find the start page, typically it will list a directory listing. But our web server is configured not to allow a directory listing. Typically, most production websites are like that. They're configured not to show a directory listing. And that just kind of, I don't know, encourages snooping. All right. Uh, in fact, if I run this and I try to type in, try to get clever here, and try to type in master page dot master it's configured to deny the file extension what this is saying is this web server doesn't deliver master pages so what do we have to do we have to make a regular web page that clones the master page and it not just clones it but it extends it so we can add stuff to it. What can we add to it? Well, we can fill in those two placeholders. All right. So let's go here and file, oops, file new, file. Pick a web form. Now, we have this option down here to select master page. This is the page that we're going to clone. So my new page, default.aspx, is going to be a clone of master page, plus I get to fill in those blanks. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I click Add. It asks me which master page I want to clone, because I could actually clone a couple of pages, right? I, I could, you know, I, 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 or, uh, I could have several master pages. I could either do the nesting that I described, where on Amazon you had every page gets this, uh, gets this content, book pages get this content, music pages get this content. Or I could actually have several different master pages on the top level. For example, on some sites, a, a gallery page looks a little different than the rest of the pages. There's different navigation and so on. So it's not like it's nested, it's just, it's different. All right. My case, the job is easy, though. There's only one master page, so I clone that. And what I get is this. I don't get a complete page. I get contents tags. And those content tags, if you look, correspond to the placeholder on the master page. So 
So if I look at the master page, I look at the, the source view, I have a content placeholder called head, and I have a content placeholder called content placeholder 1. If I look at my default ASPX page, the one that I created that's cloning the master page, I have a content tag that has a content placeholder attribute of head, so that corresponds to the one in the head section, and this one corresponds to the, head, uh, to the placeholder that's in the body section. Up here, again, it defines that which master page it uses, and I can even put a title specific to this one. So I can say Zeller's Inc. Uh, homepage. And then I can put specific content in the content placeholders. I can only put content inside the content placeholders. I can't put content anywhere else. So like if I try to like put an H1 here, gives me the little squigglies. If I put my mouse over it, it says content is not supported outside of script or ASP, uh, ASP content regions. Another way of saying that is I can only put content in those placeholders. If I try to put content outside the placeholders, then there's no way of knowing where I want it to appear on the master page. All right? Therefore, it, 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 it says, hey, you can't do that. So I can only put content in here. So I'll put a little H1. Oops. It says home. Zellers Inc. was founded in a log cabin and so on and so forth, all right? Now we can look at this web page, right? Because we actually have a web page. We don't simply have a master page. So I can go and run this. And it's going to bring up default.aspx. And we'll notice some of the content comes from the master page. This, this, and this. And some of the content comes from the, uh, the yeah, the default at ASPX. So let's go and let's create, a, let's create an About Us and Content page too, doing the same thing. All right. The, 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 the process will be the same, right? I'll go in, say New, File, a Web Form. I want it to be Contact.ASPX. I do want to select a master page. I still only have the one choice. And I'm given those two content areas. And I can put H1. Contact information, <laughs> and then I can do uh, an about us page. So I'll go to new file web form. You should really include a cell phone number <laughs> and home address. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get call. And this is the About Us page, and all right. Now, one thing I do oftentimes just to make my life easier, 
is I'll right mouse on this and say, set a start page. Because normally, whatever page you're looking at, that's what the web server brings up when you go into debug mode. But a lot of times, I might want to start with the home page regardless, so you can set it as a start page. So now I go here, and I have my default page. And I have an About Us page and a contact page. Not bad, right? Pretty consistent. And if I wanted to change, uh, 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 change something in the header, for example, that's the common content, the common content, I would therefore go into the master page and put the change in the header. So Zeller's Inc. Ohio's finest. All right. And now I can run this. And not just the one page, but every page will get that change. So all styling's done on the master page? Well, that's not styling, right? No, but if you wanted to you know, style it up. It well, you, you, would, you, would, you would follow the same approach as, as you would if you were doing a plain old HTML site, right? In other words, if there was a style sheet, you know, depending on the, on the scope of the project, the size of the project, um, if there was a single style sheet that you wanted to use on every page, then yeah, you'd put that on the, the master page and not mess with it anywhere else. But you could override certain aspects of that if for whatever reason a page needed to be different. Okay. You know, you could put that on the specific page. For example, if you had a, uh, a print page that maybe you didn't want a background image or, or colors or whatever, you know, you just want plain black and white, you could put a special style just on that page if you wanted to, just to, to, to make it look the way you want to. So, yeah, you would put the base style sheet in, in the master page and then go and alter that as needed. Yes? So, you, I saw that, you, you know, the links automatically worked. Is it because of the way you named it? Yeah, it's just that I was careful in naming. Okay. In other words, I, I remembered I put in a, uh, about ASPX and contact at ASPX. So, so when I created... Things are all the same as you set it up, though, it should work. Exactly. To the styling question. So you, you could actually create additional style sheets. You could create additional style sheets if there was... You could create additional style sheets, so you could put... Um, um, embedded style sheets in if there was like one thing that you wanted to look different. You know, just just for demonstration purposes, I wouldn't suggest this, but if I wanted the contact page, for example, to have a different background color, I could put that in the heads content placeholder, and I could do something like style Body. Let's do let's do header. All right, I could do that, and then. This would be gray, this would be gray, that one would have that in there for, for white. Or you could put another link in that to another style sheet file. Yeah, or you could put another link to a style sheet file, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So again, you, you have a lot of flexibility to, to, do, um, to do things that you wanted to do. All right. Now, if we were going to add another link. Again, same idea holds true. If I want to add a another page, thank you, for products, let's say. I could go in and create the link and every page will get it. Now, let's talk about 
this product page for a second before we create it. Let's say, I'm not actually going to do this, I'm just going to put dummy code in here. But let's say that I had, I wanted this look on the products page. And let's say I had several, let's say I have several product pages. Let's say I have a products and services page. All right, so two pages. And I wanted only on the products and service pages some additional content here. So I have two new pages, products and services. Overall, it looks the same as all the other pages, except there's an extra piece of content that's going to be on these two pages. All right? What could I do? I could create another master page based on the first master page, add this specific piece of content to it, and then clone it for the products and services page. Okay? So we can nest these. And again, you know, you, you, you do what makes sense. You, you, lay out your, you lay out your application and you try to look for commonalities. Again, getting back to our graph here, you're only going to be able to use these master pages effectively if you stop and think about what you need to do first. If you did not realize that product and services pages, the products and service pages needed to have some extra content that's going to be consistent, you never recognize to make the second master page and you would lose some of the maintainability of it. So, these things only happen if you think about it. So again, let's assume, and I'll create two pages, but there could be a half dozen or whatever. A products page and a services page. We'll create the links for them. <coughs> and... So now I'm going to go and create another master page. So I'll go to File, New, File, and I'll pick a master page. Now, notice when I pick a master page, I can pick another master page to clone this guy off of. So from a master page, I can clone and make pages. I can clone and make new master pages. And you have a little hierarchy there. So in this case, I'll go in and I'll put that I want to create a master page. And this is my products and services master. It's going to clone from the main master page. And now I have these two content areas that I could add to. And what I could do is I could go in and in here I could put And I'm just going to put a, a dummy paragraph here. All right. And then I can put in a placeholder that each of these clones can fill in. Did I 
I said, yeah, content placeholder. Now, I want to be careful because there's already a content placeholder one on there. So I'm going to call this content placeholder product services. You have to keep the whole name. Yeah. Pardon me? Sorry, I see that loud. You have to keep content placeholder. No. I can call it products and services. Yeah, whatever you do, you should you should be consistent. But yeah, this is just a name. So now this is a content placeholder for this master page, which means that this is the only place that things that clone from this master page can put stuff. So I'll go and save this, and I'll create my products and services pages. Select master page. Now I have a choice of which master page to pick. I'll pick that one. And Create a new file for services. Clone from that. And I can put in here the services stuff. services products has the special products and services content and then the product stuff services has the same thing so this page is cons gets its content from three places right it gets it from the main master page it gets it from the products and services master page and it gets it from the page itself as does the product page the other pages get their content from two places, the master page and the um, uh, page itself. All right. Again, not to belabor the point, but you're only going to come up with a, a good, simple, maintainable scheme like this if you think about it in advance. All right. If you just start banging away and writing code and all that, you're likely to miss an opportunity to gain some reusability and maintainability by creating master pages. In other words, in this hypothetical situation, all right, if I didn't realize that the products and services pages had some common content that the other ones didn't, and I just jumped in and started coding the products and services pages without making a master page, well, then anytime that common content changed, I'd have to change it in two places. Whereas if I designed it in advance and saw, hey, well, looky here, there's that master page. Every page looks like this, but these two pages also have stuff in common. 